Welcome to the Existential Empath Podcast. My name is Tanya and I am an intuitive empath. My intention is to share valuable tips, tools, and techniques that I have learned so you can tap into your own inner healer naturally and intuitively. Welcome back, everyone. Today, I have guest Aaron Smith, also known as that health chick. Aaron is a health and fitness expert, founder, producer, and host of What We Crave, the Emotional Eating Summit. After 30 years of struggling with emotional eating, food addiction, and shame fasting, Aaron became obsessed with understanding the root cause of what we are really craving. She loves to cultivate real, honest conversations that provide roadmaps toward healing, helping others make peace with food and ultimately themselves. Welcome, Erin. It is a pleasure to have you on the show today. <laughs> Thanks, Tanya. I literally like cannot stop smiling. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. This is going to be so fun. <laughs> So funny thing for the audience is that I asked Erin where she was from and she's from the town right next to me. So <laughs> we just started laughing because we did not meet uh, through local means. We actually met online. So when that happens, it's just pure synchronicity and you just have to relish in the deliciousness of all of that. <laughs> yeah, pure magic. I love it. So yeah, this was definitely meant to be. So thanks for having me. This is going to be Definitely. So and so, you know, Erin, many of us have our vices that hold us in bondage, right? For many years, mine was Netflix. Netflix. At the end of the day, all I wanted to do was come home, get in my comfy jammies, shut off the outside world and lose myself in another reality to the point where it became very addicted, addicting to me to do that. For some people, it's food, you know, numbing ourselves in the comfort of emotional eating, people pleasing, unhealthy boundaries, which often leads to weight gain and shame fasting. And so you and I are going to talk about what are we really craving? And we're going to get to the root of emotional eating. And so Aaron, you have struggled with emotional eating for more than 30 years. Can you briefly share your story and how it led you to starting what we crave? Yes. Yes. You know, I say 30 years. I'm like, damn, that's a long time. But, you know, <laughs> it, it started ever when I was little because, you know, like all stories start wiring as a kid, you know, and I'll touch on a few highlights and then fast forward to what we crave. But, you know, really there's a few big things that um, I noticed as a kid. One, I grew up with a house full of Costco life, which was muffins, you know, red vines, uh, any type of processed food, you know, just, and it was always eat all the things. My mom was Italian. She's like, honey, what can, what do you want to eat? Go oh, ahead. Oh yeah. They like to feed you those Italians. <laughs> yeah. And she was just all love. And I had an insatiable appetite, of course, because obviously I was eating nothing but sugar and junk. So my blood sugar was spiking all over the time. And, and I just, I thought that was normal. You know, I, just, I would inhale a jumbo bag of Skittles, like the, the, the big, you know, huge packs, not, not the mini individual pack packs. I'm talking like the big pack. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know what was going on with me as a kid, but I would inhale food and I was always really skinny. I was scrawny, like unhealthily scrawny and I couldn't gain weight. So, you know, having a house full of eat, eat all the, eat all the junk, whatever you want. Then, um, never eating really whole food with the family, you know, a meal was like hot dogs and mac and cheese, you know, that was the eighties, like karate kid Goonies vibes. Right. Yeah. And it's just what it was. So I thought that's what I thought was food. Then I was skinny, couldn't gain weight. And I just wanted to look normal. Like all the girls in junior high, like the pretty girls in junior high, you know, you just want to get boobs and fill out and look normal quote yeah. unquote. And, and then I was in basketball and I was too scrawny for basketball and I was this athlete, but I could not gain weight. So my dad's like, well, we better bulk you up so you can make the team. And like, you yeah. Know, and it's funny you say that because I played ball too. And they always told you, you wanted to look big. You wanted to be present and big. And I think that plays a subconscious program in our mind. And we'll talk about that later because I always had that program running that I needed. I'm five foot 11. So I was already tall, but I was always told to be big. And so it's funny you bring that up because that's a program that was taught to us a lot in the sports industry when we were kids. Oh, percent. And I'm 5'11", too, girl. We are, like, twinning all the way on so many things. Um, yeah, and I, you know, I was like, okay, I still couldn't gain weight. And my the weight gain my dad would be, would be like, bur drive through burgers and milkshakes and not, like, healthy protein. It was unhealthy stuff. And it was just, we didn't know what the heck we were doing. Just, like, most of our parents, just they're doing the best they can. I never was able to gain weight. So I was always eating, 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 eating. Then I was playing basketball. So I was hungry, hungry, hungry. Yeah. 
Then you can see this wire. Yeah. Then you can see this wiring. So I was never not eating. I was eating all the time. And looking back, I'm like, oh my God, this is literally an emotional eating recipe, perfect storm. Mm -hmm. And so all I knew was, and you know, and my dad didn't know how to express emotions. My mom was very just kind of like, there wasn't a lot of communication in the house. So I learned, you know, if my dad was mad at me, we never talked. So I would stuff my emotions and I would not talk about anything. It was like, just wait till dad, you know, calms down and like, we'll talk to him in a week, which turns out that's like emotional abuse to stone all your kids Mm -hmm. and just saw that was normal. So you can see stuffing the emotions, stuffing my face, always eating, just wire, 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 wire. And then enter my college career, uh, college and post -post post-college. I mean, I had finally filled out my senior year in high school, finally, right? Then I kept continuing to eat that way. Cause I'm like, oh, I'm finally growing into my body. I better keep eating this way. And I gained, you know, I don't know how many dress sizes, but because I'm tall, I could wear it well. So I didn't really realize I was gaining weight. I thought I was just getting muscle. And so just kept eating all the things, you know, college, like half a pizza at 2 a.m. You know, just like, that's normal. This is what yeah. normal. So you're just, you have, you're, and you don't even have awareness. You just think it's normal. And then- enter, I moved to California, realized, oh my gosh, everyone's super fit and healthy here. I should start eating salads. And, you know, you start learning about health, like, oh, maybe not have 10 pumps of caramel sauce in my macchiato. You know, you start, that's how I learned about nutrition. It was just all like, I didn't know. And then I got really into health and started working for um, some health companies, nutraceutical companies. And I got really into health. I actually had a health freak accident, almost died, long story short had a grand mal seizure and I got really into health. And, um, and so from then I became super hyper-focused on health, like supplements and biohacking. And that's where my career started, but then it was all sales commission based. So I was like in fight or flight all day long. I was literally making nothing. I was living off of supplements. I was cortisol spiked every day for probably five years and live that sales life. And of course, you know, like that's a perfect recipe for emotional eating, got promoted to national sales manager, got promoted to VP of sales with this other company. And I just kept climbing the corporate ladder. And the more I knew about health and fitness and real health and biohacking and how to get truly healthy, I was completely avoiding this whole other section over here of, you know, self-care, self-love boundaries. It was just all work you know, YOLO, go hard, like your commission base, like just very masculine energy. And so when I hit that VP of sales and I, and I had to travel to the East coast once a week and I wasn't sleeping. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you can see where this is going. And uh-huh. I your circadian rhythm was probably out of whack too, because you are oh. three hours behind here and going back and forth. And I, oh, can see yeah. it. Mm-hmm. I was trying to work out at 6am Eastern time, which is 3, 3am Pacific yeah. time. My, my cortisol, my hormones, everything got so jacked. I was living out of hotels, airplanes, no human connection, worked, end up working for a narcissist. I didn't realize she was a narcissist 20 hours a day, literally on my computer, like this fight or flight. I mean, I literally was the perfect example of a emotional eating storm. And I just started inhaling the food and gained 30 pounds multiple times. And I had so much shame around it because that's when keto was a big, you know, try keto. So I just went all in on keto and I would eat all the things because it was fat and it was organic and it was healthy and it was keto. And I would just numb out on all these healthy keto snacks and I would gain the weight and then I would shame, I would fast it off. So I came up with the name shame fasting. Let's talk about that. What is shame fasting? Yeah, Yeah, it was, um, it's basically when you, it's like a cover up for a healthy eating disorder, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know? Or, uh, it, <laughs> it's literally like, I have so much shame because I should know better. I know so much about the health and wellness industry and I'm gaining 30 pounds. I'm inflamed. I look like a train wreck and I know so much about health, but yet I'm not living it. And I need to lose this weight immediately because I have a conference in two weeks and everyone knows me and they're gonna be like, what the hell is she doing? She, you know, like just, just all this mind, mind game stuff I put with myself on worthiness. And I, so I would go into these fasts and say, well, uh, one, you know, a fast every couple of months is really good for your health. So I'm just going to do a fast instead of saying, oh, I'm just really ashamed that I gained weight and I need to just. So not looking it. at the emotional aspect, but looking at the physical aspect. Okay. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I would do these bone broth fasts, which bone broth fasts are amazing, but I was using that is to control my, my health, my eating issues. 
So I call it shame fasting because I was, I was ashamed of it. And I just, you know, and then I look back, I'm like, girl, you're just covering it up that you were just, you calling it fasting, but really you're just covering up that you were just so ashamed of that you put on all this weight and you're this health, you know, professional. And, you know, again, it was 30 pounds, you know, cause I was working out really hard. It, it, it wasn't like, but in my head it was, it was a lot, you know, and it's just, you know, your mind play when you're in that state of like not feeling worthy, you just, your mind takes you down these spirals, man. And so I finally said, what the hell is going on with me? I'm at the pinnacle of my career. And I am like, uh, there are some photos of me. I'll send you when we're done with this interview. There are some photos of my face. I look dead inside. Mm-hmm. My, I, was, I look six months pregnant. People legit thought I was pregnant, but that was just all the gut bloating from all the uh, issues I had from all the keto and the urethritol and the and the overeating all the fat. And man, I, I just said, I have lost myself. What the hell is going on with me? I know better. I'm still doing it. I know better. What is up? So I said, forget this, man. I'm going to figure this out. So I started interviewing all the doctors that I had been, you know, in, uh, gotten to know over the past 20 years of my career. And I said, I'm putting on a summit about emotional eating. I want to interview you. I got to get to the bottom of this because I am so fed up with this hamster wheel and, and I, I can't do it alone. You know, you think, oh, I listen to the podcast. I do all the things, but I wasn't doing the work. The actual work where you actually implement the work. The you inner know, work. Like, yeah. The inner work. Yeah. <laughs> all the stuff we're going to talk about. So yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's what brought me to what we crave. And it's been, it literally, I know it's my gift to the world. I want to help people that are struggling with it. Cause I'm like, if I'm struggling, there's going to be so many people that are struggling with it too. And, and it pulled me every day. It just pulled me like, girl, get this out to the world. Right. Then yeah. COVID hit. It was the worst epidemic of emotional eating of all time. And I'm like, this is meant for me. Like I've, I'm convinced this is my gift to one of my gifts to the world. So I've been doing it ever since. And here we are. So, yeah, yeah I think you're right. Because, you know, when that pandemic hit, it was like, everyone was looking for every vice that they could use to stuff those emotions of fear and panic and, you know, losing my job, what is going on, you know, all these things. And so grabbing for food, grabbing for alcohol, grabbing for drugs, grabbing for Netflix, grabbing for whatever they could find to, feel comfort to feel connection and uh so Aaron in your journey you realized it was never really about the food which is when we start to learn about um you know emotional uh whatever it may be you know where where these unprocessed emotions are held it's usually not about what the outside issue is it's usually something deeper so you know what were the root causes behind your cravings your emotional eating and the food addictions and why you were binge eating yeah. Man, there's so many. It's never just one. But I will tell you the top the top things that I noticed in me that after doing the summit and listening to these 50 interviews that I was like nail 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 like that is all that is me. Um one was awareness. Like I didn't even I I didn't even have awareness that I was even doing it, you know. I didn't even I just thought it was like I'm just hungry. I work out a lot and this is normal, you know. And so everyone would always say mindfulness and awareness. I'm like, I'm mindful. And no, you know, well, you're not even present inside your own body. So that was one, one of the biggest issues was I was not even present or aware of what was happening. I was that, that effort blackout moment, you know, I had no presence of uh, connected to my feelings, connected to my body. I was just, it was just a stress mess, right? So when you're stressed out, you're in fight or flight, you can't even you're like, go run from a lion. You're not thinking about anything else. So, um, that stems into a lot of things. The biggest sort of pillar is worthiness. Um, and that's a deep dive rabbit hole, but the root cause was, you know, honestly, I didn't understand what, what true feeling worthy with myself as a human and having a boundary when it came to my job, when it came to, I basically just a lot of emotional eaters have, are people pleasers and they can't say no because they don't yeah. want to hurt other people's feelings. So I learned very quickly that that's people pleasing, which comes down to boundaries, which is rooted in worthiness. So the summit is a deep dive on that, but that's, you know, one of the biggest, like the core of the summit is worthiness. And what does it mean to, to feel worthy just as you are? You don't have to go earn it. You know, I was constantly earning, trying to earn my gold star and get approval. And that came, you know, all my bosses were males or most of them were that were, had a narcissist kind of challenging me on my boundaries. It was like, they showed up in my life to challenge me on boundaries. And then I finally got it after how many years and I made a shift, but my whole career was teaching me boundaries and worthiness. And, you know, so again, that's, that's a deep dive, 
Um, another one was sleep. You know, I wasn't sleeping when you don't sleep. That is again, another pillar, hardcore pillar of emotional eating. When you're not sleeping, your cortisol is high. You can't burn fat, your ghrelin and leptin, your, your hunger hormones, you're a bottomless pit. I call that the bottomless pit mode is just, it doesn't matter what it's going down because you just need some type of energy and your, your hunger cues are off. Everything's off. So sleep is the gateway for sure to changing your life. And um, I interviewed Barton Scott with Upgraded Formulas. He has an amazing magnesium. And I don't get paid to say this, but he has an amazing- I love some magnesium. <laughs> oh man, you get a good magnesium, you get a good night's sleep. Oh, Talk about sleep. There's nothing better. There's nothing better than a good night's sleep. Oh, Where you yeah, wake right. up and you don't feel tight and tense and stressed. You just feel relaxed and rested and- at peace. Oh God, that feels so good. <laughs> that is, again, that's one of the main things your craving is, is peace, honestly. And I, well, I didn't have any of that. So, um, another piece was my gut. My gut was a wreck. It was busted open from the stress, uh, from too All much the <laughs> starting way back then to, you know, stress to, uh, you know, we've all had sugar antibiotics. We're supposed to glyphosate. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to, you know, processed foods, bad oils. I mean, there's a list Heavy metals of at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The man, it's a deep dive and it wake, it really wakes you up to everyone's got leaky gut and that's directly connected to your feel good chemicals. So if your gut is not working, you're not producing, you know, those feel good you're chemicals. Coming, you're, dopamine. Yeah. Yeah. You're looking for a dopamine mm -hmm. hit. Yeah. So you're going to be reaching for the food to get that dopamine hit, which is why you know, we're, when we, during COVID, everyone was reaching for a dopamine hit because we were just trying to get out of fight or flight and the stress, right? We want to just calm the F down, yeah. right? So when you can fix your gut, that's a, again, another huge pillar. And I used, uh, I interviewed Zach Bush, who's a legend. He had founded a product called Ion Gut Health. Seal is clinically proven natural product to seal up all the leaks, get the gut turned on like a Christmas tree, get it light, lighting up and getting your brain talking to, you know, just so you produce those happy chemicals, bloating went down, just again, inflammation went down. So all the puffiness in my face went down, just amazing. I just feel really blessed to be able to know all these doctors with all these products, but I started using that huge game changer. Um, so yeah, if you're not, if you could have the most perfect diet, but if your gut is busted open and leaking, good luck, you know, getting out of emotional eating, good luck trying to, you know, you won't be able to lose weight, your cortisol, everything gets messed up as a domino effect. You, it you does. Have and I think too, it's important. I talk a lot about heavy metals and parasite cleansing because those parasites are what's craving the sugar. It's what's craving the processed foods. It's what's craving the crap. And not only is it causing you physical issues, but they work with your mental thoughts as well. So once you start cleaning those little boogers out, you'll notice your thoughts will become more pure and more clean. And uh, so there's so many pillars. I actually had, Aaron. I had one um, client she was like, I need to stop my sugar cravings. So we worked um, <clears throat> all the way back to when she was a child. I think it was like seven or eight years old. When she would go to the dentist, she was scared. She didn't like the dentist. Well, the dentist would give her a sucker to, wow. to alleviate her fear. Well, she imprinted um, a, a memory or an emotion, a processed emotion that candy uh, you know, eliminates my anxiety, candy eliminates my fear. So every single time she would feel that sensation of anxiety or stress or fear, she'd immediately grab for sugar. And so we went back, cleared that emotion, you know, went back, did a little tapping, did a little motion code. And within days, she was like, I don't even want sugar. And a lot of it was all the way back to that childhood age of, you know, when your parents or your teachers or your doctors are handing you something and telling you, Hey, this will help. You're literally creating a program in your subconscious mind. And then we're carrying that through our adult lives. And then we wonder why, why am I picking up Skittles every time I watch television? Right. Oh, um, well, preach. I mean, I interviewed Ashley DeLillo and the main message was you're not broken. You just got wired at a young age to get mm -hmm. in, you're caught in a loop and you're not broken. You just got to fix the loop. You got to get out of the loop and you got to repair that little thing in the brain and your subconscious. that's like clicking over, you know? And it, so it's, it's honestly a lot of hope that you're not, you're not stuck. It's not, you know, you're not broken. And, um, once you can just even get a taste of that rewiring, you get so much hope. Like you said, like she stopped craving sugar. Oh my God, it's on. Then you, you're like, let's go, you know? Yeah. So 
I did that. Um, that was a big piece of it too. Uh, parasites. Mm -hmm. Um, I interviewed the healing cave lady. She's like, you, again, you can eat the most perfect meal every day for the rest of your life. If you have parasites, you will be craving sugar forever. So and your, your little belly won't go down either because those guys yeah. like to give you that pooch, that little muffin top that we all struggle yeah. with. <laughs> oh yeah. And they come out, especially during the full moon, man. Yeah, they, they are, they are feeders during the full moon. There's a reason I worked in the hospital and there's a reason why it gets a little busy around the full moons. You know, the word, uh, I would say the word lunatic comes from lunar and those parasites feed on the full moons. Yeah. I did a show on parasite cleansing and we went into detail about that, but those are pesky little, little critters. <laughs> oh, it's a legit thing. It's a legit thing. And, uh, that's exactly, uh, Mary who I interviewed, she actually showed one live on the, on the interview and, and <laughs> Yeah. And it's, it's there. It's phenomenal. My sister's a pharmacist. She says the same thing, full moon, all these people are in the pharmacy, like kind of the, just, you can see people kind of going a little bit Crazy. and mess with you because yeah, gut brain directly connected. So again, just so many things. So uh, another one would be the nervous system, you know, and just stress and toxicity. Like I, I didn't even understand I was in a stressful environment. I just thought that was normal. And my nervous system was so jacked. I thought that was normal, you know, and once you calm your nervous system, which tapping yeah. we'll talk about, I did the first time I did it, I bawled my eyes out and my nervous system finally calmed the freak down. And I was like, I don't want to reach for the food. Oh my God. You know? So we'll talk about that, but yeah, there's so many things, but that's probably the top, the top list right there. Yeah. There <laughs> is. And so, you know, many people will numb themselves out with whatever it may be, food, alcohol, whatever. Right. And so when you can really dive deep into the root cause of what that is, and a lot of it, we're on autopilot. You know, my dad, when I, I went home to visit my parents and every time that television turned on, my dad felt like he needed some chips. And I'm like, all right, turn the TV off. So I turned the TV off. I'm like, dad, what's the deal with this? The moment you sit down, you need chips. And he's not even paying attention. He's literally, he's like, I don't know. He goes, I feel like I need this you know, hand to, to mouth movement going on here, you know? And so it was funny. I handed him, he has this massager thing and I'm like, here, give me the chips, put this massager, just start massaging yourself while you're, while you're doing it. And over the course of time, we were able to reprogram his subconscious to not want to grab those chips. And he's like, wow, I think it was just the action or the motion of needing to do something while he was watching television. Now, where did that start? Probably somewhere in his childhood, but many of us are on autopilot. Like you said, eating that bag of Skittles, you were probably just doing it because your subconscious was programmed to do that. And there was an emotion attached to it that made you feel good about that. Eating, you know, yeah. full of co colors or whatever. Yeah. Plus, yeah, just happiness as kids, the sugar, and it's, yeah. it's, it's exciting to eat candy because it's, you know, all the things. And you know, I think that's the most beautiful thing. What you talked about is like, it's not about taking things away. It's about replacing. And that, that way, when people are trying to get out of this hamster wheel, like you said, if you just replace it with something else, you're not feeling like, oh no, don't take away my life, even though you're getting your life back. But people need just a, an easy replacement to sub out. And then it's so much easier versus rip this out, rip this out, restrict, restrict. It's like, no, what can we add in? What can we nourish? What can we replace? And then you start to support yourself with nourishment versus neglect, and then you can get yourself out. And there's so many tools, which I know we're going to talk about, but yeah. uh, that, that was a gateway for sure. It's just nourishment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, what have you found that works when, you know, say, say you're getting triggered and you're in that deep emotion and immediately you're like, I want to order a whole pizza. Now I had a college roommate. This is what I, I never suffered with the emotional eating, but I witnessed it firsthand living with someone and God, I saw the amount of suffering that she went through on a regular basis. Like she would just struggle with the binge, eat, you know, the binge eating and then the purging. And so she would, I'd come home from class and she had ordered three huge pizzas and gobbled them all down. And then she would purge, 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 and then feel guilty, guilty, guilty. Then she would go on a health kick for a week and then she would order the pizzas again and then binge and purge. And so I saw this routine with her and I thought, oh my gosh, like in my mind, I was like, why can't you just stop it? But I, I know my, my own vices and I think, why can't I just stop it? So, you know, when you, you know, there's, there's probably some people out there that could really resonate with her story, you know, that, 
especially with things like DoorDash and, you know, stuff like that. You're just like, oh my gosh, I got to get this off my phone. I can just, this makes it too easy to binge eat and to, to, to grab for the food. So, you know, what are some tips, tools, techniques that you have to help someone in the moment when they feel like they're in that deep emotional space and their trigger and their response is to want to grab for the food? Yeah, well, there's, man, there's so many because uh, everybody's different, you know, and I can definitely give you mine, what worked for me, but you got to know, I think just like, you know, snowflakes and, you know, everybody's different. We're all wired differently. We came from different backgrounds. Our chemistry is different. Our hormones are different. Our stress levels are how we feel about ourselves, you know? And like you said, some people are like, just don't put the food in your mouth. And you're like, you don't even freaking know, man. You don't know. understand me. I know. No, I hear you. But, and <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, someone had said that, just don't eat it. I'm like, dude, no, it's, you know, it's, that's why emotional eating is one of the hardest things to get out of because we have to eat every day. That'd be like trying to stop, you know, smoking cigarettes or alcohol and you have to do it to survive. You know, it's, it's the hardest thing. That's why there's so many hamster wheels, but, or there's so much, so many people on the hamster wheel. But for me, you know, after doing the summit, I, I actually have like a bag of tools. It's not just one tool, but there's many tools. And it, and to me, it was, for me, it was, okay, I'm feeling a visceral response of a stressful situation coming on. And this was after the summit when I, after I'm doing all the work and I still get triggered. Like we still, that's just life. We're still going to get triggered. I had a major betrayal from a friendship and end up like one of my best friends, two of my best friends had to just literally sever the relationship. And, um, my whole body responded like freaked out because it was, it was a very big deal. And it was very sudden and urgent. And I could feel my whole body responding like it used to. And the first thing I wanted to do was go to the fridge. And I have these yummy, healthy paleo donuts that are there that I get because they're my healthy treats because I love healthy treats. And I went straight to the fridge. And I and then I, <laughs> I told myself, you realize you're getting triggered right now. And I was like, yeah. Uh -huh. And it's like, Hey, it's time to pull out your toolbox and you're going to go process these emotions. I'm like, yep, I sure am. Cause I know what to do now. It's almost and like you're having a talk with your subconscious yeah. and your conscious. You're like, all right, ego conscious. Yeah. Listen, yep. Listen exactly. up here. I'm going to tell you how it's going to work. <laughs> right. So awareness is always my first tool. Cause if you're not aware, how can you get anywhere? Right. Yeah. So, um, oh, that's a nice little quote. I might, I might keep that, but, uh, <laughs> anyways. So I had to pull myself out and you know what I did? I still went to the uh, thing. I grabbed the paleo donut and I grabbed a couple other things and I ate it. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go, like, I'm not having shame about this. I'm just going to have a, a healthy treat because it's, it's one, but I noticed when I want 25, that's when I'm like, okay, we got, we got to do some work. But I, I did my thing. And then I went immediately and I started, went right into my bag, of, my bag of tools, which is go outside, walk get deep breaths of fresh air, call someone, journal, scream, uh, punch something, go to the gym, go to hot yoga, move, literally just drink move. a huge glass of water, <laughs> drink a huge glass of water, tapping, which we'll talk about. Um, but it depends like, again, which one feels right in that moment for you, you grab it and you go with it. Cause sometimes it might be negative 20 degrees and you can't walk outside. So what else do you have? Right. But fresh air, slowing your breath down and knowing how to do breath work, which uh, I interviewed Josh Trent. He's got, he's a, just amazing, just on deep belly breaths and breathing the right way. Not this, because <laughs> when we're doing that, we're shallow breathing. We're going to go right for the food and we're going to devour everything. So knowing how to slow the breath down, knowing how to breathe, knowing, okay, I need human connection. I need nature connection. I need to move these emotions and that I need to really dig deep into why am I being triggered? Because usually when someone triggers us, we think it's them, 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 point the finger, point the finger, point the finger. And I learned through the summit, you actually got to point the finger yeah. at yourself mm -hmm. and go, what is this bringing up in me? What stuff have I not, you know, what do I need to look at in myself? So I call it, you got to go to the trigger gym. So you go to the trigger gym and you work that shit out. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's true. So, you got to figure it out. And emotions are energy in motion. So one of the best right. things you can do is get moving. Because, yes. you know, that's when you're triggered to eat is when you're not, you know, maybe you're being stagnant, stagnant and you have all this stress, like a pressure cooker just building up and you're ready to 
first get, you know, just go for a walk, clear your mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just felt it was like this, all the energies like this. And when you want to eat the food to calm yourself, when really you just, you don't want to stuff it, you want to move it. Mm -hmm. Right. And so tapping is one of the best tools if you know how to do it, but I, I didn't know how to do it at the time. I was just using other tools, but man, we'll talk about the power of tapping instant relief. Mm -hmm. Um, could not, I was, when someone had mentioned tapping, I was like, okay, you know, like tapping. Okay. I don't really see how that works because you're just tapping around your ears and like, how can that even do anything? Then you actually do a deep dive on it and you're like, oh can my God, feel it? the greatest miracle of life. Yeah. <laughs> I had, I had a friend from high school. I had gone home and she says, Tanya, I was watching some of your videos about that tapping thing. And I thought you were nuts. Like you're talking yeah. and doing this. And she goes, and I did it. And then within two hours, I was in the fetal position, crying my eyes out about something when I was seven. And I said, well, did you feel better after? She said, yes. And so it is funny because, you know, you're like, what am I doing and what am I saying? And so let's do a little dive into EFT tapping. I've done many shows on it because I specialize in it. And I actually started uh, doing it for myself because I was working in grief and loss and I was stuffing. That's why I was tuning out with Netflix is because all day long I was seeing death. I was seeing loss. And so all I wanted to do was watch something nice and happy, like a Hallmark movie or something. And so I was trying to shift my reality. And that's why I was using it is because I had so much trapped grief and loss in my body from seeing so much death that I wasn't processing it regularly, but you used it for emotional eating. So tell us a little bit about that and how that benefited you. Yeah. Well, first of all, I think you need to come on what we crave and we should do an interview on your story. Cause that's yeah, I'd love to amazing. But, um, you know, I interviewed Brittany Watkins, who's another expert in the space. And, you know, I, I was new to it. I was just like, okay, I'll do it, you know? And, and, um, you know, again, all, I had so much childhood stuff and my childhood wasn't even, you know, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. And I had so much childhood stuff. We all do. It's just, we, you know, we make, like you said, we make these imprints and it just kind of sticks there until you can actually rewire, get out get the loop, you know, reconnected to the right, you know, just everything. You got to get in there and just do some work. And I had no idea I just thought it was a little bit out of the blue, like, oh, man, it seemed a little weird. And I got, I got my butt handed to me on that <laughs> one. I, uh, we started going into um, the deepest root memory for me, which was my, you know, a memory with my dad and not feeling good enough about, I don't even know what we went into because I did the tapping and it released the, the Yeah. And you forget about thing. it. Yeah. So I forget about it, but it was just some deep dad stuff. It was a father wound stuff. And I remember, um, you know, I was, it was live on the interview. So I was like, there's no way I'm going to cry. Like, and it's just, I'm, I'm recording right now, you know? And I'm like, whatever, I'm fine. I started tapping and then we did it for a few minutes. And then I just, I just, my whole face just started tearing up and it just whoosh, came out and I, uh, just releasing, there's just a lot of worthiness as a kid. Um, and just a lot of stuff that I, didn't get a lot of love from my dad in ways that, that you would feel like you should as a kid. Um, a lot of stonewalling, a lot of, you're not good enough until you go to church and you do this and you do that and you're going to go to hell. And just, he said some really mean stuff as a kid from a religious standpoint that you don't forget. So that was stuck in there and you can see how that would affect my worthiness of how I felt about myself, which would affect my boundaries, which would affect people pleasing, which would wow. affect my ability to say no. And so it's, I've completely shifted my, oh my gosh, I'm a completely different person now. Thank you. Thanks to that. Then I also started working with Angela Bell and we worked on it from a business standpoint with feeling worthy with, you know, it's okay to make more money than your family. Yeah, it's prosperity okay and abundance. Yeah. Yeah. And it's okay to break out of the cycle and, and, you know, make more money so that you can do, you can go help the world in a big way. Cause I have a random acts of kindness movement that I do. And I, want to pour a ton of money into that. And, and I felt, you know, inside I could feel a tug of like, oh my God, if I make over this amount, it feels weird to me. And I, and my body's like, nope, that's not safe. So yeah. I used tapping to get, to feel safe again, to re remove that, not remove, but rewire that memory of with money blocks and business. It was amazing. And every time I would do it, I would have something drop in right after that. That would be <laughs> you could a direct manifestation of clearing that block and same with emotional eating. I just, my nervous system shifted over time. The more I did it, 
my nervous system is just, it's chill now. Like if I get activated, rarely do I, rarely does my nervous system react. It takes a lot like that betrayal thing with my friend, but overall nothing really freaks me out anymore. I don't have the nervous system, um, like attacks like this. It's just chill. And it, it, oh my God, the nervous system is at the root of all of it. If you can, if you can get that nervous system, just in that, uh, state of not sympathetic, fight or sympathetic. Yeah. That, well, and, you want it in the parasympathetic, but most of us, yeah are in yep. the sympathetic that fight, flight, or freeze, but that parasympathetic is that rest and digest. And, you know, it yep. sounds like you're a lot like me. I'm in that 95% of the time. I mean, I have my spikes every now and then that I'm like, Ooh, but now I have tools like you do. I have my little toolbox. I can pull things out and say, okay, what, why is this coming up? But the more you learn these tools, tips, and techniques, the faster you can move through it. Like, you know, you don't have to suffer for years anymore. It's like, you may suffer for a day at the most, if not that an hour, you're like, okay, I can work through this. And yeah, you know, for me, it's like, I can tell, I see a little cyclical pattern happening over a day or two. And I'm like, nope, we're done with this. Okay. <laughs> what is oh, it's this? Amazing. I use muscle testing. So I use applied kinesiology. It's like, okay, let's get there. What is that? Now let's tap on that bad boy and let's move it through. <laughs> yeah. I'm all about it. And we don't give our body enough credit that it's talking to us all the time. We just don't understand it yet. It's like, it's this magnificent machine and you don't think it's not trying to talk to you and it can, it can energetically, you can talk to your body. It, it will talk to you. If we just get rid of that block that, oh, that's just too, too out there. No, it's not. We are machines. And it's like, do you remember, you know, the magnificence of this thing? It's going to be, it's going to be talking to you, you know, it just got its own system. But um, yeah, when I, I remember Angela said, you know, the nervous system is the key to everything. and even with wealth, like if you can, if you, if your body's always in fight or flight, you're never going to be, you're not going to attract what needs, what's trying to come your way because you're blocking yourself and tapping. If you have that in your bag of tools and you learn, you can, you feel that resistance rising and you feel that tightness, you can break through that so freaking fast and it'll, it'll bend time for you with, with manifesting and, you know, just everything in your life, you're trying to really just accomplish. It's just there as a tool. If you just lean in and learn more about it. So I'm so grateful that people like you are teaching like, Hey, this is a tool and it's free. It doesn't yeah, cost. And it's anything. attached to our body. And yeah. you don't even have to tap. You can hold, you can just hold and focus like it, you know, for people that don't want to do the tapping, you don't even have to know the points. Just pick one that, that you want to do. <laughs> you know, it's like, And I think that's the beauty of it is you don't have to be perfect about it. Just do it and focus on how are you feeling? Talk it out, talk it through, move it through. Now, how do you want to feel? You know, it's like, okay, let's move that through and let's reprogram. And so, you know, I always say our, um, our, our, our thoughts are like most of us, you know, when we're listening to a record player, you're listening and then it starts skipping. Most of us want to pick up that needle and move the needle and continue on that record. Uh, to continue listening. Well, that skip is going to come back at some point. What EFT tapping does is it actually takes that entire record off and puts on a brand new skip free record, you know? And so it just is playing that through and, you know, it's just, it's an amazing tool. And like I said, I don't use it every day. It's not something that I'm like, Oh, I got to tap every day. Some people do, but I use it when I know something is coming up and I need it. And just like you, there's all these tools. And part of my show is teaching people how to tap into their inner healer naturally and intuitively. And that incorporates so many different ways. And just by you coming on and sharing, you know, your success stories with how you have overcome your emotional eating is just inspiring, uh, you know, others today who might be in the position where you were in the beginning of the show where you were sharing, you know, this is where I was at. This is how I got here. And now look at me, you know, now look at where I am. And so, you know, just by sharing your journey is so wonderful. And I thank you, Erin, for coming on the show today and just really being vulnerable and open because talking about these things, we especially when it comes to shame, shame is one of the most hidden emotions. And I say that because when I, as a practitioner, when I'm working with emotions, I'm peeling away every layer of that onion and shame is like the core of the onion. It's in oh there. God. And so tell us a little bit about the summit that you put on and tell us a little bit about some of the other services that you provide. 
Yeah. Well, I will. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. Um, I'll, I have a couple of things that are really key that I wanted to share um, based on what you just said. My brain just starts firing. There's so many things um, <laughs> that are so impactful and I'm so happy if this hits anyone, I'm so grateful to be able to, to share. So thank you for having the platform. Um, you know, what we crave was birthed out of my own mess and, um, it's free to watch. It's just like, here's all the interviews. So you just go to what we crave.com. I'm, I'm rebranding it right now. So there's a little bit of a wait list till the next summit gets released, but it's free to watch. You just put your name in the email list and you get notified when it goes live. And so, um, it's free to watch. Of course, if you want to buy a copy, you can always buy a copy, but you don't have to. Um, so it's really just, again, just, I just want to put this out into the world and where do know, they find it? Where do you find yeah. it? the summit what we crave yeah what we crave.com okay great yep and that's it and it's pretty simple and you know inside of there i have you know links to the products i recommend that have really helped me there is links to additional coaching you know at a really great price so there's more well, there's more in there because a lot of the speakers a lot of people want to work with the speakers um, so I have just, it's a whole little network in there that I can, I can help with, which is really nice. I also have a YouTube channel with little, with clips. It's not all the interviews, but there's some clips in there you can watch in the meantime, but yeah, it's all, it's all there. And, uh, I wanted to mention something that was really important. Um, you said something and it really sparked this, uh, you know, for me, I had to get quiet with myself to actually listen to myself because we're always searching for the answers outside ourselves, right? We're always, what's the latest thing? What's this? What does this expert say? What, and that's great to learn. Don't get me wrong. Like, I'm so grateful we have the internet. But there comes a time where, you know, products and certain certain companies, they don't want you to listen to yourself. They want you to buy their stuff because that's how they make money. And I think the best coaches and the best teachers teach you that it's all within you and this, everything that you need is within you. And you are your own healer. You have to be your own hero. You have to have your own back. You have to be the love you never had. You have to be the hero. You know, you know, you have to be all those things. And we have it all in within us if we're just willing to go there and, but then, and then actually do the work. It's one thing to like learn and then, but actually do the work and be committed to, I want to freaking change all you have to do is just listen. It's not about doing a thousand things at once. It's just doing one thing at a time and listening to your soul. What is the next thing that your soul needs? For me, it was moving out of California and getting out of my toxic narcissistic job that I was working for and get into the mountains, get into nature, slow down, start sleeping. It was nur It was just all the nourishment and all the peace, all the things that bring you nourishment and peace that's how you stop emotional eating. You, you have to backfill inside yourself with the things that bring you safety, peace, nourishment, calm, loving, uh, anything that fills your cup in that way, the emotional eating will naturally dissolve, but it takes you slowing down enough to go, what's that step for me? And so again, awareness is your first tool. So for me, what I learned from the summit is like, we're just craving we're craving to feel alive. We're craving to feel peace and we're craving a connection to ourself. Yeah. And if you can give yourself that, then that's, that's the recipe. And it all starts here. It, it doesn't, it's not nothing anybody else can do, but you. So that's, you know, again, that there's 50 interviews that go through actual detail of all the root causes and all the solutions. But at the end of the day, it comes down to you and how, what do you need? Cause you are your own person that knows what you need. So all the answers are within you. And that was a hard, that was a hard thing to be like, the answers are within me, but I want to do this. And I want to listen to this and this and this. It's like, I know you do, but what do you need first? Because nobody else knows that but you. And when you start listening, you start showing up for your life. I swear to God, it's magical. Life starts showing up for you. And you'll just get these little things in life to help guide you to go, you're doing a great job. You're there. Let's go. We're good. We got you. We're with you. Like, let's keep, keep this going. And that's how I got unstuck out of everything. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm right there with you. I, you know, I think that's a part of our healing journey is, you know, at first I, I was a crackhead for supplements. I mean, I just, I was a Guinea pig for every supplement because I was trying to figure out why I was in pain, why I was suffering, you know, all of this. And then, I started to learn everything is inside of me. And once you shift that focus of external to internal, 
you know, you can move mountains, literally move mountains within whatever you might be struggling with. And so I do, you know, a lot of my shows, a lot of my guests are teaching people how to do things within themselves, you know, learning awareness, learning mindfulness, learning breath work, learning how to tap, um, just learning, learning simple tools, muscle testing, you know, these are simple tools that we can utilize ourselves in any given moment to help us relax the nervous system. Like you said, that's key. And so Aaron, I think we, we touched on a lot of really awesome, powerful topics today in the show. And so, you know, before we end, is there anything you'd like to share for anyone out there who might be in that deepest, darkest place of emotional eating that you can share with them today to help pull them out of that pit or maybe help just have them see the light just a little bit? Yeah. You know, well, honestly, I feel like whoever is listening to this, it's in your atmosphere for a reason. It's in your, it's in your world for a reason. So you're on the right path already. And knowing that this is in front of you because your soul is looking for answers already. This is almost a magical little, here you go. Here's one more step, little breadcrumb, you know, and follow that. And honestly, I was in the, in the biggest, yuckiest, emotional quicksand of my life. And I remember telling myself, I don't know what the hell is going on, but I'm going to figure this out and I'm going to put this backpack of emotional, whatever this is. And I'm going to go up this mountain because clearly I got to learn a lesson and I need to learn something. And I know I'm going to come out of it on the other side. And I just kept telling myself that when I wanted to literally quit everything, I just kept remembering that. And if you can remember that, that already your soul knows that it, it will, it's ready to make a shift. And as long as you keep that in your head, that you will get out on the other side, life's going to show up for you. Just keep believing that thought and things will come out of the word work. Just keep showing up for yourself in any way that you can just show up, whether that's going for a walk or taking a shower and just feeling a little bit better about yourself. Just take a little step to feel a little bit better just keep showing up. doesn't have to be big, a big thing. Just keep showing up for your life and life will show up for you and know there's beautiful purpose inside of it. I knew somehow there was for me. I didn't know what it was. I just remember taking these selfies going, what is happening to me? Ugh, like I'm in the worst, you know, despair of my life. What's going on? And I, and then it all, it all was on the other side. So there's something beautiful that life is showing you just cling to that faith and remember that it will all work out. There's something beautiful that's a part of your purpose and just keep showing up every little day. Absolutely. And that is such a wonderful way to end the show. So for those of you out there, check out Aaron Smith at whatwecrave.com. Thank you, Aaron, for coming on the show today. Oh my gosh. It has been I mean, could we just talk forever on this? Forever. <laughs> Luckily, we live near each other, so that would be fun. We can connect. <laughs> it was so awesome. I'm so grateful for you. Thank you. I can't wait to meet up. So thank you. You deserve to navigate your life in alignment with health, happiness, and abundance. To learn more about the services that I provide, including Beyond Quantum Healing Hypnosis, EFT Tapping, and the Emotion Code, visit my website at www.theexistentialempath.com.